Well, as the old saying goes, honeys, we're Oklahoma here on NECC Relic, joined by Gaugan for the spookiest of these Fridays. Uh, nothing scary, really, about what we just saw, though. A fantastic series, a thrilling series, perhaps some could say. Uh, but it's now uh, on to Derby Day as Oklahoma City University takes on Oklahoma Academy. I am very excited to see both of these teams. I'm hoping that neither of them decide to open an umbrella inside while walking under a ladder and looking at 10 black cats. And I'm, I'm sure there are plenty more out there that I'm forgetting. But yes, Friday the 13th in October. Very, very spooky. Hopefully not as spooky for the winner of this series relic as Oklahoma City University and Oklahoma Academy go up against each other, as you've alluded to. Let's take a look, shall we? Oklahoma City first. Yeah, 100%. So we've got Nickel Miracle and a real tater man taking to the field. We've seen Oklahoma City a couple of times over the last year or so. Pretty solid team. Of course, it's the Champions Division. Great Plains A for the conference. Uh, and both these sides, they've won in their first week. Both 3 and O, so they're going to be pretty happy with things, but here's the thing, they're second and third in the table, Galgan, and Oklahoma Academy will be rather eager, I would imagine, to try and equal what Ottawa are doing up there in first. I think Oklahoma Academy will be really eager just to play a game in the first place. Obviously True. both 3 and O, but Oklahoma Academy having that forfeit. Let's take a look at them as well on the opposite side. Maver, Guga, and Piranha. It's a nice little Nice little synergy you've got there in the reading of the names. But looking forward to seeing all three of these players take the pitch, presumably for the first time this NECC season, or NEC season, if you like to say, or any season, nice. if you like to, you know, butcher the name of the league itself. I'll stop with that awful bit of <laughs> comedy in large air quotes. Oklahoma Academy, though, I'm excited to see this. Oklahoma University, in and of themselves, are trying to build a program from a school that is a namesake in various other avenues here in the country, and it certainly seems like they're doing a stand-up job. Yes, and especially spicy conference, isn't it? We've aforementioned Ottawa. Obviously, we've got the two Oklahomas here as well. WSC Wildcats in there. Uh, mm -hmm. St. Paul Concordia is in there, too. I mean, this is a... It's a really stacked conference. And already you can tell Spartans, you mentioned they forfeited against Oklahoma Academy. So you're right. This is their first series, uh, despite officially having a 3-0 and o on the board. Spartans then went and lost 3-0 uh, to Ottawa Braves, which is why they head up the table uh, on a 2-0 and o WL record. A 6 and... Uh, two, sorry, my apologies. A 6-2 and two, uh win loss record in terms of game differential as well so they had a little bit more of a tricky first series i do apologize on that front and although it's early days you know we have to always put that into the forefront is it's week two there's a lot of rocket league yet to be played galgan but there's nothing like setting down an early marker and as much as i say spartans are probably going to struggle from here on out to make that top four for both of these sides top four goodness i mean imagine if one gets one over the other and it certainly goes deeper than that. You alluded to it, but the regional battle here, Pride on the Line. We've had matchups between teams that are less than a mile from each other at the point of playing their games. And at this point in time, while the distance may not be as close between these two, certainly feeling it here in this particular matchup. Best of five on the way as all regular season matchups are, and it's Oklahoma City University with the first goal. It took us a little while to get there, but Miracle taps it home. And that Lamborghini, love to see it. Uh, all the hard work done by Nickel Piranha flailing in the water. Again, great irony today. Maybe we, maybe this should be a comedy instead of a thriller or a crime drama or whatever. But Oklahoma City University, oh, it's all about the romance. They're loving what they're seeing. They got the first goal of the series. And I think one of the things we didn't quite touch on uh, during checking out these rosters, it's a fairly strong mix here of grade levels. Miracle. The opening scorer for Oklahoma City University, the only freshman on the roster, but the senior just merely by one year, I believe, Nickel, the sophomore, making quick work of a second goal, Oklahoma City. They look very strong opening up. The only thing uh, resembling a jigsaw there coming in the form of the goal celebration. What a well-placed shot it was as well. Sometimes it really does pay to just keep the ball low rather than going for a hard-hit shot. Any higher? 
and it meets that final defender in the form of Maver. So an early 2-0 lead, very quick out the gates, Oklahoma City University. A nice bit of passing play through the center here by the Academy, although quickly disarmed. Here's the couch attack. Oh, that is incisive. One nice passing play from Oklahoma Academy and one perfect passing play from Oklahoma City thrown right back at them. A 1-2-3 drawn up in the playbook of dreams. And it's a 3-0 start here. Still early goings, but you start to run away with this one for Oklahoma City. They really have not slowed down. These two teams is becoming uh, more like Oklahoma. Oh no, Mark. Uh, and I can tell you for certain that it's... I mean, that was a stretch. I really like to apologize, everyone. Uh, although I think that the only ones who need to be apologizing is Oklahoma Academy to each other. Their defense is getting torn asunder in a big way. And even here, looking for those power plays, Oklahoma City University, not content with just the passing plays. They're mixing things up with the demo as well. Really, really impressive opening two minutes and I fear it's only going to get worse for the academy. The boys in blue here on the pitch taking to it like a baseball diamond and hitting nothing but homas as they look oh, for a fourth yeah. here can't quite find it whole lot of collision happening here at the bottom of the box Nickel is able to score for nothing. Dimes here's a dime for you Nickel with a hat trick in the first three minutes of this series uh, such a confidence booster. I mean, hey, if they weren't confident enough already, they're going to be confident now. And, and we've really got to start to look towards the academy and ask, what are you going to offer here? There's been a flash of brilliance. Everything else has been the equivalent of drowning right now. They are struggling the air. They are suffocating under relentless pressure. And every clearance, I mean, look at this Galgan, Oklahoma City with some foresight in the midfield. The tall task to make dollars out of cents, especially when Oklahoma City are willing to spend all the coins in their piggy bank, and Nickel is cashing in early in this series. You hope that it's not exhausted by the time we continue on. I mean, we did see this when we jumped into game number two of the previous series. We had the fight back to bring that series back to one all, but then the response afterwards from Illinois Springfield to lock St. Ambrose out of that comeback potential could go either way. There really haven't been too many signs here for Oklahoma Academy still looking for their identity. They've got plenty of chances. They're looking for passing plays, but the last crucial final step yet to be seen. Everything just broke down. And that is kind of what I would expect from a, a team in game one, uh, especially at, at this level, at the champions level, where they're just trying to feel each other out. But I mean, Oklahoma City has come in prepared. They've done the simulator work. They've uh, completed their homework and they're currently passing with flying colors. Speaking of flying, you score three goals. That's a big save from Nickel. Uh, ends up dropping the shot down to Maver, but oh, they're, they're hiding in their own half, Oklahoma Academy. They're waiting for Oklahoma City to, 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 to almost oversell themselves. But the problem here is that they're playing so well, Galgan, that they're not making the mistakes that the Academy are hoping for. That's the thing. Oklahoma Academy cannot count on the ball being handed to them on a silver platter. The plate's clean for the time being. A clean sheet held for Oklahoma City University. Beautiful challenge here from Nicola. Demo to boot. Shot goes wide, but it creates enough confusion that it'll slow down the push. Guga takes advantage, however, of this quick run down the side while we see it far too often. It's centered out here, but a beautiful challenge again. Still relevant. Always have been for Oklahoma City. Demo from Miracle. They still try to maintain control of the ball even when it careens back into the blue zone. Wise words uh, from my fellow commentators over in Europe, Danny Boy ATM. It's all nice and impressive scoring four goals. What's more impressive is doing the dirty work afterwards, defending and keeping that clean sheet, ensuring that this statement to open the series, let us not forget, uh, is earmarked with everything perfect. Nothing blotting the record uh, and there is no blot on the record uh, that is as comprehensive a performance as you will find it does have a different feeling I i'm with you on that like if we had gone you know eight nil nine nil here in favor of oklahoma city you just 
chalk that up as an offensive blowout and you're like, man, our defense is really not kicking it here. But to add the clean sheet into the equation here, Oklahoma Academy now have so many more questions that they have to answer for themselves because they find themselves down early on. And then, as you say, Oklahoma City University does a solid enough job of just locking out anything that this University of Oklahoma Academy roster can do defensively or offensively. It's a whole lot of issues sort of piling up very early on in the series. Yeah, City were down on the dance floor. They were strutting their stuff, a bit of a ballroom blitz, four goals, all in very quick succession. Uh, I don't even think it was necessarily taking their foot off the gas to not score any goals. Uh, I think that it was just a case of possession, 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 and making sure that their opponents didn't get any opportunities to score. Like We should give the academy some credit here because they did find their way further up the pitch, but that really laid all of their problems bare. If you're going to concede that many goals, you kind of got to go for it in the final third, in the attacking third. And there was one player at a time, a bit of a drip feed reinforcement system going on, and that's just not going to cut it. You're absolutely right. They need to send more into that play, gain that confidence. But again, it does feel like Oklahoma Academy just kind of want the ball to fall exactly how they need it to. And then they'll set up the passing play and then they'll score the goal. But as soon as they started thinking about that, well, this is the opposite of said situation. It's exactly what we're asking for. Someone drives their way in off an awkward miss from Nickel, but that's all it takes. And that's the capitalization you need from Oklahoma Academy. Ah, oh, game one, you've done it again. The metaphorical Loki, the agent of chaos. 4-0, complete domination. Not a sniff for Oklahoma Academy. Guess who scores first in game number one? It's the team in orange. And going for bumps and demos is Guga. Well, this is a shot in the arm. Medicine applied. Now are they able to write the paper, to write the wrongs towards the end of this game? Because Oklahoma City, they've been rattled. Now it's time to see how they play the line. My goodness, insane work from Maver here, trying to do it all against the odds. Oklahoma Academy found each other defensively, bumps galore than your post, but somehow they still keep this ball near in the corner, and it's another miss for Oklahoma City. Now, trying to get this ball back out, Nickel with a redirect, but it'll get picked off. Tater takes to the skies, looking for some sort of clear, but the tables feel like they've turned early on. That's too gone, however. Tater, no boost, trying to get a center pass, and does, but Nickel sends it right into the bar of that was a crying chance right there. The difference, Galgan, proactivity, no reactiveness here. It's all about taking their destiny to their own hands. It just over top of the crossbar was rattled in their half. Guga utilizes the crossbar to his own benefit. Bang, bang, bosh, 2-0 Academy. You just, you start to wonder where this was in the first game. If this was present in the first game, we'd go to overtime or we'd at least be closer to it. But I mean, better late than never to wake up into this series and potentially give us a tie game going into game number three. Obviously job's not done just yet, but Oklahoma City, the efficiency on offense has been lacking. They haven't, oh, slight had their chances. But they're gonna thank their lucky stars. The recovery was not in the cards. I don't envy Guga, but you just simply got to reverse. And look at Maver! Look at Maver who pulled away! There was a great clearance opportunity, and they trusted Guga too much. I'm all for Team Synergy and putting faith in those around you. But Maver, you had the perfect trajectory to make the safer call. To see that comes into effect. If they start to regret, there's still half of the time remaining here. Plenty to go. It's been such a stronger showing here for Oklahoma Academy. What can they bring home with it? Oklahoma City will do everything in their power to get this ball clear, but it's been much more staggered here in their approach. The defense has not been as fast to respond. Quick challenge here, though. Maver comes over the top. All three stacked up in the corner, going for a double, tries to center it out. It's slow response for both sides here. Not quite sure where they want to send this play towards. Playing slow, 
It's the position which is going to dictate where the ball is going to keep on going. And it's going to go towards the net yet again. Crossbar on target. Ho, ho, ho. I tell you what, that's a goal steal if ever I've seen one. But it could have been so close yet, Galgen, to true disaster. Oh, they spent so much time, though, in the offensive zone. You'd think they'd start paying rent by now. But finally, getting the benefits and the rewards that they saw, it was so close. You're so right. But... Oh, you just kind of hold on. You hope that one goes in. It does Oklahoma Academy grab that two-goal lead. Feeling confident now, but they can't let this front foot start to slip. They need to maintain that pressure. It's what was lacking for them in game number one, and it allowed Oklahoma City to get the pushes going that they desired. Now, inside of 90 seconds to play, Oklahoma City might start waking up, and that sleeping giant does not want to be perturbed if you're Oklahoma Academy. You've got to preserve this lead. Okay, we see it, everyone. City's attack has certainly halted. The shots going more way with that accuracy lacking compared to game number one. Uh, but Academy's defense has been far, far better in terms of setting up for potentially what could happen rather than trying to see what happens and then they will make the most of whatever we're left with which was crumbs if that over the first five minute period what a turnaround and this is going to be huge going forward so huge in fact oh vanilla ice ice baby they are so back don't count out you don't make a play like that if you're not feeling confident Uga had all the time in the world it felt like it froze for just a brief second, but that's all it took. 45 to play. Do we dare write this one off here and now? City have not had the same sort of presence they enjoyed in game number one. They've had the same number of goals scored against them, and it feels like it could continue. Piranha with no boost trying to make it happen. Mavra takes over, trying to keep this ball relevant. Center pass, no one, two, three, as Kuga is out of the equation, but well to do so. You've got to start to slow things down and secure the win now. Decision makers of the game might be a little bit sus, but I tell you what, this eSport never, ever disappoints. There's number five. It's the same score deficit that Academy lost by in game number one, except this time, City are the ones feeling it, and they got to be hurting a shell shot. I can only imagine what they're thinking, though. I'm confused in my own right as to how we flip so so boldly here between these two it's expected in rocket league it's it's not a perfect science and any team can realistically win any game so long as the skill gap is close enough we know it to be in this as you mentioned earlier incredibly stacked division of great plains a but we head to game number three with the series tied one apiece both teams exhibiting what they're best can look like theoretically i mean they they could overperform what we've seen but it's been a complete trade you know we haven't had that showing where both teams are clicking near a hundred percent you would hope that that's what we get here in game number three but i don't know the answers for both teams at their you know worst in the series thus far seem a bit too complicated to answer in a best of five it's a very tall task uh, I won't be using this analogy, but I will be referencing it. So get your commentator bingo cards out, everyone. Right. Uh, it's not even six of one and half a dozen of the other Galgan. Mm. There was more going right for the Academy than there was going wrong for City. City, for me, their fundamental problem was, I think, evidently in the final third. They, which again is ironic, given that that's exactly what happened to Academy in game number one. Their main shot opportunities, most of them hit the crossbar slash woodwork. And it felt like they were taking too much time to figure out what to do because Academy had tightened up the defense so successfully. And so, I mean, look, sh they get away with it on this occasion, but sharp shooting and just reactive shots, playing with your, play with your hands rather than your head works more often than not, I would suggest. Uh, on the other side, of course, the Academy, they didn't just tighten up the defense. They're looking a lot more confident and they have a lot more purpose in the final third. So two things going in their favor. One against City University, but adaptation is now the name of the game. The one thing I don't want, like I, I love the step up in confidence, but I don't want that to translate into complacency here. Nicolette is 
A very risky touch to take, but it succeeds. Tayer finds a clear despite the demo. Nicole wants to push for this to continue. Miracle shot opportunity saved away by Guggen. Well to do on that quick jump. Had to read a lot. Tater, good recovery here for a second, but it pinches out back downfield. Nickel sends it back. Plenty of transition plays abound as City look to try and right the wrongs of the previous game here. Force the Academy defense into all sorts of precarious positions, but Maver with another clear down the side wall has been continuing that from game number two, putting the pressure back on City. Harassment of these poor Oklahoma City players. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't like to be on their side of things, although, speaking of a side of things, uh, it appears that the side of Orange is down to two ever so briefly, and yet, so in form are Oklahoma Academy. I was going to say that they're looking alright. They're not looking alright anymore. A field bad backflip and City are gift wrapped. It's not even Christmas yet. That was a rule one. That was a rule one. There was a What? <laughs> I was with you the whole way. I was like, oh dear, bro. He was hiding. And everybody's going to be salty about this goal. No, inside the near post is Nickel. Respect for holding the rule on, honestly. City grabbed the first goal. Academy want to answer right back, but that's a fantastic thing to do in game three. It is Christmas already. What a surprise package for us. Uh, <laughs> although. If I'm Oklahoma Academy or anybody involved with the coaching setup, I would be absolutely I know rule one is yeah. oh, it's rule one, it's memeing and whatnot, but you're literally you you're literally looking great and now City have scored the first and you're asking a team that hasn't yet actually won from behind to do just that. Still Riding high on the confidence of game number two, don't get me wrong, we're seeing these direct plays and these strong interpersonalities weaving throughout each other and, and finding each other successfully, but scoring up top that matters, Galgan, and that's the one that is failing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, to play devil's advocate on this spookiest of Friday the 13th, if you have Piranha locked up against Nickel in a, in a rule one, Realistically, Piranha hasn't had the most prolific impact on the offense here, but for City, it's everybody. It was Nickel in game number one. Miracle, though, has been present the entire time. That's a big jump to make, and Maver thought they had the touch. Thinking, though, is only half the equation. Have a see, Piranha is the proverbial janitor. I've been keeping a close eye on his role, and it's been all, it's not necessarily been an anchor role so much as an interceptor role. Uh, it's what's allowed this high press change from Oklahoma Academy to find as much success as it has, and by removing them from the play, we saw that one mistake. Because Piranha wasn't there to support on the high press, free shot downfield, 1-0, now become 2-0. And the bit is between the teeth of the City players looking the more likely to score a third than Academy is to get back in with the first. That's the thing. Where do we get this parity within an individual game? What? No, 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 no. Move on. We're done. We're, we're moving on. 80 seconds of play. Academy somehow still have this ball in the offensive zone despite everything we just saw. Another block from Maver here. Piranha is circling in the waters trying to chomp at the bit here, but all that's found is a back pass right into the hands of an unsuspecting Guga. Goes wide. Maver has to pull that one from the near post. Follow through. Almost an own goal, but it's saved away. 60 to play. Yeah, I think it was actually all fair, Galgan. I think it was all fair, and it might be all equal if Maver has anything to say about it. A much-needed reply at last. You, you kind of expect this, though, at the same time. It's like these teams have done enough of finding out exactly what works, that surely they're going to learn. Surely they will make the adjustments to keep this a closer game, but it's all on Academy. That kickoff is not in their favor, and that's not the player they want high up in the skies, but Maver will make the challenge early and at least contest that opportunity away. Tater, quick shot on the off angle. Does not succeed. Piranha with a clear over to Guga. Maver trying to take that midfield boost so they can turn around and stay relevant for the second touch, and they do. It's popped up high. Piranha can't jump for it, though, was on the other side of the field, and that's that opportunity gone by the wayside. Play that Guga had covered. It's a miss. Miracle cleans up the mess. Here he goes again with that musty flick in field to be put. Oh no! Sideways. Full court carry required now for the Academy who dribbled past one 
bring the bring the nitrous boost on. Tate gets a bit of it away into the midfield. Up goes Gubra again, but is anyone there to receive? Well, it's Miracle who receives. Uh, not exactly a miraculous performance from City University. Uh, this is one that, unfortunately, the academy let out of their own grasp. I have to agree. It's it's one where you feel like they're taking those steps to get closer and closer. It it doesn't quite click though. You you get those hints again of game number one where they kind of sit back and wait for the dream play to present itself. And and City, you know, rightfully so, like many other Rocket League teams before them, aren't really keen on letting Academy play their own version of the game. They'd rather dictate the pace themselves. Fair play. Academy, it's up to you to find the response. And it's too little too late. There are chances for Academy, sure, but you want them to find it earlier. You want them to stay relevant enough in this game, but I don't think they're out of it. I feel like we're going to game five. I, I just get this feeling about this series that it, it, we haven't seen everything from all these players. I'll tell you what, if you engage in rule ones, you're probably not going to be giving yourself a good chance. Look, call me a stick in the mud all you like, but yeah, we, we, yeah, we're talking about a crucial game, City University on match point scenario. And Academy need to find two game wins in a row. Uh, they've set up the task for themselves. Will they be able to complete it? I certainly hope for your sake, Galga, you're predicting the game five. Uh, I will I will remain optimistic for now. I hear you and I raise you. We go to game five solely because Academy score a goal and then every single Academy player makes it their purpose to get into a rule one with another player, therefore locking us out from anything else happening. It, it wouldn't be the most entertaining result, sure, but it would secure Academy the win here. Surely there are other ways that they can go about winning this game. And honestly, at the start, I really like how they've gotten this one going. Ooh! Google wants to play that low and almost got away with it. You can almost see the grin on his face, couldn't you? Just like, please, please make your maneuver. <laughs> I've got you in my pocket. Uh, but unfortunately, the pocket is quite stretched too wide enough to encompass the entirety of the city defense. Maybe doing a little bit of break dancing there as he brings the ball forward. Hits the backboard, easily picked up by Nickel. Interception by Guga. Piranha up. Miracle wins the race. Tater forward, loses out to Guga through the corner. Nickel with another clearance. This one a little bit higher. Central, Miracle, backboard. Oh, Tater caught a little too far upfield. This drive comes to an end. That's the thing. You can tell City were chomping at the bit for that attack. They saw the transition play potential because Academy had committed two to the initial touch that went off the side wall. It's such a tough read for the defenders to make if they're not keeping their eyes on it. And City did struggle, but Academy couldn't get a strong enough shot off. And now City looks to transition. One, two, three. Again, it rings off the bar. Nickel tries to follow through. Can't connect. Center pass here. And Miracle will have to back up with it. But plenty of resources in the tank. All three players hit 100 boosts at the same time. Miracle can't hold on to the ball. It all feels like it's for naught here for City. They've got their chances, sure, but locked out at the midfield line again. Academy have got a good hold. They've certainly got their pick defense down on the midfield line. To make that high press that served so well in game number two. Demo on Nickel by Aguga. Maybe looking for the second touch. Tater, well marshaled. That's going to head central before heading back towards the orange net and Tater reaches, but those proverbial fingertips not long enough. Nickel now with a demo on Piranha, but it was a demo wasted perhaps as all three players are back in town. Uh, but the drive still continues. City University on the prowl. Finally prize this ball from the grass. Tater to the back wall. Anybody home? It's Miracle right back to where he came from. Nickel can't get any closer to the target. Guga on the counter. Not a whole lot of defense standing in front of the blue net right now, but Miracle finds the gap and doesn't find the ball. Another challenge. That one's headed in. Nickel has to make a save and does. It's still precariously bouncing at the top of the box. Guga circles back around. Demoed. Miracle. It's a trade. Maver will catch and collect here in the back of the zone. Even footing here outside of 100 seconds now to play. Miracle takes to the skies. Google once more. It's centered up, but nobody's there fast enough, and City will get another clear. Maybe very smart not to pull commit there. Picks up 100 boost just to be safe. Lovely work. Threading their way through the blue wave. Tater. Uh oh. Is Nickel in 
and support. Demo from Maver. Second demo from Maver. Google was waiting for the opportunity and the shot is weak. Had to turn on a 180 dime. Wasn't much power to be had here and failing to win that follow-up challenge. This is actually being uh, well worked at City University. Excellent transitional play. Still alive and Tater can't punish. Neither can Miracle. No third bite to the cherry because Nickel's gone back. Caught in two minds and caught out big time. Wano Academy. It has all backfired in the worst way possible. You talk about goal scoring opportunities that you need back. I'm running out of fingers to count the number of times City have slammed the ball in the proximity of the posts and yet not found the angle they need. They are sorely hurting for an accurate shot right now. And Academy are ready to take all of those rewards into a 1-0 finish if they can close out in 45 seconds. Excellent work from Piranha. Reading the book. Backboard is Guga goes high again. Committing this City University defense. There's Piranha from up high. Again, burning down the tanks, burning down the reserves. Mava and Guga. Oh, and would you believe it? It's another woodwork hit. But City University are Pepe hands because this one's got in the Academy's favor. And it's the same issues that played City in the other game that they dropped just a bit too far forward. The defense looks flustered. They're otherwise very strong in those rotations. But Academy just have that will and that way about them to find the gaps that they need to. It's 20 to play. City have everything to find one, let alone two to force this to OT. Plenty of touches ending up in front here, but no real heads to tap it through. No power to find that shot. Academy fought their way through the storm here in game number four. A and deciding game in the series locked in as Academy find a clean sheet of their own in a very scrappy game four. I hesitate here as this ball is just precariously positioned around that orange net. But finally, all three defenders see it to the ground. Dowden spot on the money. Game number five on the way. Academy back to their former selves. Uh, City, for me kind of ran out of ideas what i think stuck out to me the most about that academy offense was the amount of demos that we saw and it wasn't exactly just demos for demos sake it was so well timed and it was very rarely that we saw no good opportunity come out of those demo runs and the demos that were coming out from their opponents city it's that reactiveness. It was almost out of desperation, like a, oh, they've demoed one of us, so we should demo one of them. They've got to take back control. It feels like they're the ones actually wilting under pressure. Uh, and why wouldn't they, Galgan, after such a strong start to this series? It's one thing that you really have to consider with demo plays, because oftentimes teams will just go for it to give themselves a little bit of space, maybe collect the ball on defense. But you're spot on the money. Oklahoma University Academy are using their demos in a very calculated manner. And it's what got Oklahoma University Academy such a strong start in the first game of the series that they won. They're able to continue that momentum into game number four. But it does feel like we're all kind of a feast on here. Does it swing back in favor of City here on Champions Field? It's a beautiful sight to see as well for both of these teams, but one of them's going to leave much happier than the other. Much, much better. It's an aerial passing play this time. That's a near post kerfuffle. Tay to go for the other near post. Double commits galore. And still, the wall doesn't fall down. How many chances do you want? It really goes to say, when you just listen into the game and hear, what a save, what a save, what a save, over and over and over again as Academy put up that wall in front of the net. But they all it's sent into the floor. It's another chance for Miracle to rebound. My goodness, it just it continues. It compounds for Oklahoma City University. So many shots taken on. None of them accurate enough by near pixels, it feels. Academy need to give their woodwork a break. It's genuinely the fourth player for their team right now. Uh, but make no mistake about this. Uh, the City University are cruise control in terms of possession. They're now in cruise control in terms of that much-deserved opening goal.
Yeah, I mean, that opening minute, you don't generate that much pressure without having solid goal-scoring opportunities. And while a couple of them were oh so close to being scored, you can tell City have not lost their rhythm and the steps they're taking forward. It's all on Academy to find that answer. We don't want to go back to game number one where Oklahoma University Academy could not find a goal and they could not even find an offensive setup. It feels like we're being very, very reminiscent of that point in time, something's got to give here for this orange side. Yeah, well, the City University have got Michael Fassbender in, but you can almost tell that he was asking, no, I want to see the real Oklahoma City University because this is a pacey outfit and Academy cannot handle the source. They're being forced into, well, unforced errors like that. It's efficiency. It's destructive. It's a 2-0 lead at City University. Are they back finally? That's exactly how you want to do it if you're City, though. You've got one god on the challenge, another one essentially up in the hall there, up the mid the line, and the third is up in the corner. The defense is in a bad position as it were, but the closest one to the ball gets demoed away. That's the efficiency that Academy have with their demo plays thrown right back in their faces at the worst possible oh! time. And it only continues to run against them. Tater ducks and dives, gets in there for that corner shot. Yeah, the Woodworth's head's gone, mate. Head's gone. Head's gone. Can't believe that it didn't save that. Incredible. 3-0. <laughs> Yikes. Oklahoma Academy. Now they're going to be thinking. Now the gears are going to be turning. So, I mean, look, City University have scored three in half a game. <laughs> As we've just seen there, there is a very high likelihood that Academy will be able to match that, but will is very different to are actually going to. Oklahoma Academy, hopefully not regretting giving their woodwork in. $185 million guaranteed, much like the Baltimore Ravens to Lamar Jackson. Very topical joke here for us Americans. Very nice. But, you know, uh, you know, gotta, gotta throw in some football references every now and then for the two people who maybe follow that in the audience. I digress. It's all lights in the sky here for Oklahoma City. They've got nothing but a bright future staring ahead of them. A 2-0 start to the season. There is the fourth goal. Hesitated for a bit. But again, man, these posts are really lacking right now, letting everything in. Hey, I'll buy into the culture. This is the fourth goal from Oklahoma City University, sponsored by... Hey, did you know that you could buy NFL stuff in the Rocket League store? <laughs> let's forget about trading, why don't we? And let's not forget at how good Oklahoma City University have proven themselves in game number five. It's been a series that is... It's almost like it's whiplash, in a sense. It's been one team all the way, or one team all the way, and neither side has really been able to find that groove, that momentum to get them through without this Game 5 decider. But in the Game 5 decider, when it matters most, City University have turned up big time. A clean sheet too, let's not forget. And listen, you know, maybe this is the one that Oklahoma City University can claim over Oklahoma University. If this were a game of American football, I'm sure the result would be much different, although I'm not entirely informed at how powerful Oklahoma City University are in the sport. That is a question for a different oh, time. Shit. What a powerful touch. But it does go high and away, quick and clear. Nickel wants to tap this one home. It's icing on the cake. 60 seconds to play, but the result feels set in stone. It's the double commit that gets me, Galgen. It's a nice play from Academy. They don't need to send two on it. Very unnecessary. The, I mean, nobody's at home. It's a free goal again for Oklahoma City University, who at this stage are just adding the stats. Maybe one consolation. Nickel says absolutely not. 50 seconds to play. Administration for the blue team. Plenty of players ducking and diving, trying to get their way in for Oklahoma Academy. Guga races to that ball, does not get it on target. Miracle to get one last clear away. Five goals in this amount of time is a far stretch. A miracle, if you may. Sorry, had to do it. But for the time being, maybe one for the road. Guga is certainly trying to carve a path to make that happen. It looks like Oklahoma City University have this one wrapped up. 
Well, they came into this series second and third in the table. And for Oklahoma City University, they will remain second with that inferior goal, uh, sorry, with that inferior game differential, I should say. But the one that matters first and foremost is the win-loss record. That will be 2-0. They have cemented themselves behind Ottawa Braves, Oklahoma Academy. It's 1-1 one one for them. And what a fantastic performance here from Oklahoma City University. I love that, you know, I mean... I, I mentioned it during the series. I kind of wanted to get a game where both teams felt like they were playing at 100%. And I think you can make that argument for games three and four. We get those closer score lines. I think even in game three, though, with the one goal differential, you know, it, it felt like it was just too little too late for the comeback. Like if we had gotten that a couple minutes earlier, maybe we go to OT. But at the same time, you know, game three was when the rule one happened and that complicates all of your, you know, analysis that you could provide. Mm. Ah! I don't know. Still, at the same time, I'm happy for Oklahoma City University here. It's a very solid win to scrap out. A very resilient play from them. Look, they were given the lifeline <laughs> and they seized it with both hands. There's nothing that you can take away from City in their determination mm -hmm. to make sure that once they did hit Game 5, they weren't going to look back, and they didn't. Game 5 was by far their best performance of, uh, you know, of that entire series, which is saying something given how good they looked in the first five minutes of the series but if you're the academy learning lesson it's a one game differential in the end mm -hmm. and that one game that you lost for me comes down to the one where you were fooling around with a silly make-believe rule mm. it's all memes and games in these sorts of things that don't matter but this does matter early season you want to get one up get one up on your rivals your derby rivals especially Galgan. i think this is an opportunity spurned mm. for the academy i really do i don't know you know where i stand more mm, rule yeah. ones is always <laughs> a good thing for competitive play i respect it listen we've got a lot more rocket league to be respecting relic i always love to see you here and i hate to see you go but i must bid farewell to you for the evening i will not be bidding farewell however to the rocket league action i've got to add a bear and a light together for our next matchup as we see northwestern college take on oklahoma christian university in the great plains a champions division here of the necc that and more coming to you after this short break <laughs> 